It's a big old shout, a big old praise. Hallelujah. Who can do what just happened but God? Hallelujah. Who can do that? Who wouldn't serve a God that won't set you free and won't fill you with his precious Holy Ghost tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy New Year, saints. Are we alive or are we dead? Do we serve a dirt God or is he yet alive? He's yet alive and he's on the inside of us. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He didn't do anything for me. He's still worthy. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of this world. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. A real quick prayer. Father God, I thank you right now, God, to use me for your glory. Lord God, hide me behind the cross. Lord God, that I might be glorified, that you might be glorified in me, and that the church might be edified and lifted up. In Jesus' name, you can say amen and be seated. Woo-hoo. All I can say is amen and amen. Praise God, Pastor. Today, as I was in prayer and studying, he showed me that he was going to do an altar call first. And in my notes, I don't like coming from my notes. I like to preach, praise God. But every once in a while, he'll give me a crazy little thing to go with. Hallelujah. And I bring it out just a little bit different than what you've ever heard it come out before, praise God. But that's what makes me an individual in Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus is still in the house, and he will be lifted up. Whoo, glory. I thank God tonight that he did give me a thing. Uh Hallelujah. We've heard the quote. It's an old proverb. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. A single step. And tonight, I don't care how many times that you say that you're saved. And you need a new beginning. I need a new dipping. I need to come back to the fountain one more time. It's one step that gives me a brand new beginning to my journey. And tonight, that's not the topic. Tonight, we're going to talk about preparing for a journey to a far away land. A journey that we're all on as believers and as children of God. We're on a journey. Hallelujah. We all know these facts that I'm going to bring out. I'm just going to bring them out just in a little different way. And I'm going to try to hurry. Oh, it's okay. (laughs) Praise God. A journey, even the longest and the most difficult ventures have a starting point. And tonight, the young man that came down and got his deliverance, there's a starting point for you tonight. I don't care how many times you got to come back and get a starting point. Keep coming back until the work is done in you. This is not your end, but this is your beginning in Jesus Christ. And don't you listen to that devil anymore. This is not the results. This is not the end results. Yes, sin brought you here. But Jesus Christ carried you back there. Hallelujah. And he's going to carry you through the rest of your life as you set your mind on him. Amen. And young lady back here, Stephanie, praise God. There's not anything too hard for God to do. Amen. Everything that you want to be set free of tonight, and at the sound of my voice, everything you want to be set free of tonight, tonight, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day of your new beginning. Today is the day that the Lord said that I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And even in your weakness, I am strong. Even in your weakness, you are strong through Christ Jesus. Because if you've invited him into your heart, he is your strength tonight. Praise God. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. A journey, especially a long one, is a pilgrimage. And we know that we, as we become born again of the Spirit of God, we are pilgrims walking through a world, hallelujah, that we are not, this is not our home. Hallelujah. Our home is heaven. And therefore, we're going to work towards that far far away land, not in the natural, but in the spirit. Praise God. Help me, Lord. 
how to prepare for this dirt journey it's going to take setting goals it's going to take setting short goals and long goals and if you don't know how to do that get in the word get in prayer take one day at a time take one item at a time take a one area in your life at a time don't let all of your problems overwhelm you because the devil will say all oh, these I'm bigger than what God is but he's not he's a liar He's smoking on his pipe again, and one day he's not going to be smoking his pipe. He's going to be the tobacco inside the pipe burning for eternity. Amen. The number one thing that we need to do and to prepare for this journey is to decide what destiny we are headed for. Amen. In the natural at a traveling agency, they're going to say, what's your destination? And since I'm talking about a faraway land, I'm going to talk tonight about going overseas. Hallelujah. So I'm going to need some special things on my journey. Hallelujah. But tonight, my destination, I have a choice. Well, you have a choice. Is it heaven or hell? Decide where you're going. Jesus said in 18 and 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from far away. It is not from this place. But yet as we come into the fullness of Christ, he said the kingdom of God is in us. If you have Jesus, which is the blood applied to your sinful life, purging you from all sin and cleansing you and reconciling you back into the Father. If you got him on the inside, he said, after you believed, hallelujah, have you yet received the Holy Ghost? And once you receive the Holy Ghost, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he says, therefore, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto us and even yet is within us. Praise God. Hebrews 13 and 14 says, For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to a city in heaven which is not yet come. You know that old song, I'm looking for a city. Whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. In our homes, we use smoke detectors. And in our cars, we have dashboard lights that give us warning signals. Glory to God. And we'd be foolish if we ignored these warnings, right? Similarly, we need to pay close attention to the scriptures that warn us about the terrible consequences for rejecting God's provision of a Savior. Just as that testimony tonight with Sister Jennifer, we do pray for that young lady's soul. The Bible also tells us in order to be reconciled to God, we must... We can spend eternity with him if we do these things, if we accept these things. We know sin separates us from God. You don't have to put this up on the screen, but I've, I got it typed. Romans 3 and 23, if you're taking notes. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Colossians 1 and 19 says, For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of the cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Praise God. I'm going to skip over a few things. This was a, a good subject on salvation tonight because he told me he was going to open up the service with an altar call. So first of all, we've made our destination, correct? All right, we're going to a foreign land now, so we need something to get across that ocean. And before we can leave the United States, we need a passport. Hallelujah. And if you don't already have one, you know, you can buy a passport in some special places. But heaven's passport mm, 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 is only obtained from one location. And that's Calvary. Hallelujah. Calvary. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Only can we get our heavenly passport from Calvary. And that simply means Romans 5, 8, and 9. We find that Christ died for our heavenly passport. Amen. In Exodus 12 and 13, just as the blood of the Passover lamb spread on the uh, doorpost of the firstborn of Israel from, kept them from certain death, the blood of Christ spares us from eternal death in hell, and it protects us from the wrath that is to come. Hallelujah. His blood shed on the cross is our heavenly passport. All right. Okay. Number three. In case of an emergency, you want to tell your friends and your family where you're going, right? Well, on this trip, I forgot to tell you. It's not an airplane flight. <laughs> It's not a train ride, because that doesn't go across the ocean. But talking about that old gospel ship, hallelujah. I'm going to take a trip on the good old gospel ship, hallelujah. I'm only a one-liner, okay, as you figure that out. <clears throat> so in case of an emergency, you're going to tell family and friends where you're going. So they might want to go too. You know, those cruises that you can take. Don't you know the more you can take with you, the less it costs? Hallelujah. So as we're telling our family and our friends about it, that's nothing more than witnessing. Sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, brother, I got touched by God tonight. I got to tell you, I, when I came in church, oh, I left a brand new creature. I wasn't the same when I left. Hallelujah. So as we're sharing the gospel, hallelujah, we are telling others where we're going and if they want to come too they can hallelujah hallelujah Psalms 40 and 9 says I've told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation behold I have not restrained my lips as you know O Lord I've not hidden your deliverance within my heart I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation the great congregation is none other but outside these walls and number four, praise God. If you, hallelujah, are really still planning to make this trip, you need to make sure you're healthy before you go because some countries don't provide adequate medical service. <clears throat> well, that's not heaven, of course, we know. Because when we get to heaven, we're already healed. But if you're not healthy, you're not going to make it. That passport can be in your pocket, but if you're not healthy, you're still not going to make it in. Now, wait a minute, Sister Susan. You mean the sick aren't going to be saved? That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking spiritually tonight. Healthy, soul, mind, and body. And just as I said earlier, today, take care of what needs to be taken care of today. Don't worry about yesterday. Forget it. You can't change it. But today, you can do something about it. You can work on your mind, as Brother Joshua said, and I too suffer from anxieties and such from my past. But today, my mind is healed in Jesus' name. Oh, Hallelujah. Man. Last year was a battle, but praise God, I got through with Jesus. I thank God that as we take care of our soul health through prayer and through the word, through the laying on of hands, Praise God. Go with me in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It tells me to examine myself, to see whether I'm in the faith. Test myself, it says. I don't know what version this is. I'm sorry. King James would be fine. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? Hmm? If you fail the test, you are not full of him. You got to get full of him. And you get full of him through prayer and through the word and assembling yourself together with like-minded people. Praise God. James 5 and 13, just as we were talking about earlier, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Affliction here means you're going through trials and tests and persecutions. This is for you to pray. You get down and you pray. You pray. Me pray? I don't have power. Yes, you do. Jesus in you is your power. So yield to him. Also, is any merry? Let him sing psalms. And there's another scripture that talks us about singing in the spirit. 
if those that are filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, if you just get lost, hando ho shi kando bo ho si mahai, and start singing praises unto Him in your heavenly language, glory to God. You and Jesus are in the most intimate place you could ever be in. I'm telling Him how much I love Him, how much I adore Him, how much I want to be like Him. Hallelujah! Woo, glory to God. This is all about getting healthy before that passport works. Amen. And if you are sick, hallelujah, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he shall be forgiven. That's a powerful prayer. And of course it goes on to say about the effectual pr fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Point number five. Make certain <clears throat> that any citizenship certificates and identification cards that that country requires are with you before you go. I said, no, wait a minute. I had the passport. Wasn't that enough? But don't you know inside your passport, it's got to have some stamps in there. That means you've been from this department, from that department, from that department, and that means there's a little bit of growing in God, a little bit here, a little bit there, line by line, precept by precept. This trial, I came through it. I passed this test. Oh, I flunked that one, so I'm not going to get an insignia over there. So I got to go back and take that test over again, and when I've qualified, I can come back, and that stamp of approval can go into that passport. Hallelujah. No, this is not a score game. This is not uh, somebody can get there better than me and in the higher rank. That's not what I'm talking about. There are things that we do and we're responsible for our salvation. And if we don't keep ourselves in the love of God, we can lose out. We can lose the battle because we haven't kept ourselves in the love of God. And it's a daily walk with the Lord. Amen. Luke 1 verse 3 and 4. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. You're to keep yourself unspotted from the world. No spot, no blemish, no wrinkle on your garment. Keep your garment white as snow and you can be pure and not perfect because your motives are pure. Your heart can be pure because Jesus is still working on you. Amen? Philippians 3 and 20 talks about our citizenship. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. 21st verse says, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Amen. And number six tonight is try to arrive as early as possible just in case there's a great big long line. Hallelujah. And as you notice, I didn't say bring any baggage. Oh, as the message for watch night was, unpack your bags and leave the baggage behind you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me see if I can find my scripture reference for that one. Hallelujah. We also know that here's a tip for getting ready because when you travel to a foreign land, you might run into some different languages. You might run into some different customs. You might run into uh, some different traditions. And what you do may offend somebody <laughs> and be interpreted the wrong way. Well, this study, I took it and flip-flopped it. As I come to Christ, behold, all things that were old have become new. I got to learn how to talk. I got to learn how to walk. Amen. I got to learn the customs of the sanctuary that I assemble myself in. I don't just come in and take over and say, Pastor, scoot over. I'm coming up and singing me a special tonight. <laughs> I don't go over here and be a guest and come up on the front row where the ministers sit. I might be asked to scoot back a little bit and then I'll be offended and I'll walk out the door. So you study where you're going. Uh -huh. We're going to heaven. 
You get in his word and you find out what heaven's going to be like. Oh, I heard it had pearly gates. I heard it had wa- jasper walls. I heard that it had golden streets. I heard that it had a river that flows from the throne of God and it never ceases. Those waters are are rushing and running today. Hallelujah. From the fount of God. I can drink from that fountain and never thirst again. The spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. If I'm hungry, I get in his word which is the bread of life and I begin to eat. Hallelujah. And during these Daniel fasts right now, glory to God, that word is real good. It's real good. It's real flavorful to my soul. Praise God. And then there's some warnings that we need to know before we actually make our destination. And that is beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm. You know, when you're trying to buy your ticket to get to a place, you can find all of these specials on the internet. Price is right. You know, all of these little discounted places that you can, oh yeah, this is a real good ticket. You find out you're sitting back on this really skinny airplane in this seat and you're on top of the engine and it's roaring all day long and it's a six and a half hour flight. Okay, so you know, not everything that shines is is good, Amen. amen? So we've got to be careful that even buying that passport on your journey to that heavenly home, that heavenly land, you can run into some false prophets. You can run into some false pastors. You can run into some false Christians that call themselves, I'm a Christian, but I get to drink. I'm a Christian and, you know, I can sleep with the choir director. I'm a Christian, but, you know, they just want me to come to church and get my tithes. Those are false teachers teaching damnable doctrines that will send you and them to hell if you listen to their lies. So as we come into the presence of the Lord and as we prepare for this journey that we're going to this faraway land, my mind is set on the prize. My mind is set on going to heaven. My mind tonight is made up. And just as the Lord moved tonight by the altars, I would like everyone to stand to their feet tonight. And I don't care how long you've been saved. Today is a brand new day. I may have done something that completely ticked the Lord off that was completely contrary to his commandments. And I think I'm all right with the Lord. But I'm all wrong. And I'm not going to make it in. My passport won't go through the gates. As the musicians come back, thank you. I would like everyone to bow their heads and examine their own heart tonight. Talk to the Lord in your own way. And I'm going to ask him, Father, in the name of Jesus, search my heart. And if there be anything in me that's not pleasing unto you, I give you permission, O Lord, to take it out. I give you permission, Lord God, to lead me and guide me every day. Order my footsteps, Lord, and fill me with your spirit. Fill me up until I'm running over. Lord Jesus and as I avail myself and I bow down before you Lord Jesus I know God that you hear my cry my heart is sincere and contrite before you I'm humble and not puffed up Father God for I know I'm nothing without you but with you Lord Jesus I can do all things Lord God lead me and guide me unto all of your righteousness Lord God you said to seek your kingdom and your righteousness and everything that I have need of will be added unto me And today, Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity to share this word with your people. Lord God, may it, Lord, get into our hearts and may it bring forth a harvest, Lord God. May it keep us until the day of temptation, Lord God, our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth, in me as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.